Hello and welcome to my series of videos of tutorials for strategies used for the Wind Waker Randomizer to help people learn how to do the strats needed to stay competitive and learn how to race this. This video covers the strategies for Cliff Plateau to Bird's Peak Rock using storage to get three checks out of logic at the beginning. One of the checks is actually in logic, but the other two are not. So regardless if you're coming off doing Diamond Step early or you're starting immediately from outset, you're going to want to warp to Forest Haven. That's also where you want to look at your the map screen and see what dungeons are in logic for that seed. That's usually where everyone else looks and sees. And so then what you're going to do is you're just going to warp here and then sail over. What I'm doing here is just a simple trick called sail pumping to get more speed. Just alternate A and Z or A and whatever your sail button is the right rhythm and you keep getting speed boosts. What you're going to want to do is just get here and your cleft plateau, and that's where I'm going to explain what storage is. There is a link in the description for zeldaspeedruns.com where more info about storage and other tricks can be found. I highly recommend checking that out because this is going to be a very brief, uh, bra very brief explanation. So what you're going to want to do is get the Wind Waker in your hand and run and jump onto this ledge. Uh, the way storage works is you basically need to press Y as you climb up a ledge with a wall by the ledge that would put, that'll would that make the camera flip around Link and push him off the ledge. Get a, what's known as a Wind Waker dive, like that. And what you have to do is press B three frames before Link touches the ground to cancel the Wind Waker, and that's what you get is known as storage. If you press it too early, Link will like jump, stutter in midair. If you press it too late, you'll see what I just showed you there. That was too early. And there, that's what storage looks like. So when you get this, this means you actually have what's known as storage, so that you can cancel that, and that lets us do the next trick. And ignore me messing up the Windwaker dive, I'm just messed up. Anyway, so you're going to want to jump over here, sword slash, jump up to here. And you can either go to the chest the normal way by just falling into it, or you can do this really just a shortcut. Sword slash up to here. Angle your camera just to the right of the chest, and you'll be bounced over the vine. And now that we have storage, when I open the chest, you'll notice that I don't get the item, and that you hear this infinite opening sound. Well, now with that, I can literally just run up the wall. So if you run up the wall, run up to the wall where you see the slant, and you want to angle yourself like this, because if you don't, you'll mess up and void out, and that's really bad. And you want to angle yourself like this and just run and jump straight on the wall. But not that high. You want to be lower like this, about the, about this high. And jump into the wall bar right here and it's hold forward. And you'll end up past that barrier. And you'll end up and you can go into the load zone. What that was is what's known as chest storage. By using storage and then opening a chest, the game's cutscene when you're opening a chest, even though short for the randomizer, uh, makes Link's hitbox really small in order to fit in the chest. By storing the chest, we get to keep that that hitbox for ourselves, and that lets you literally run up several walls and clip through things you're not supposed to be able to fit through. And as you notice, when I came out, you saw my rupees go up. That means that chest had a, had a purple rupee in it. That made it really easy for me to know what was in that chest. Otherwise, you may either have to see if your hearts got healed, because when you hit the vines, you lost health, and I got the heart from the grass, so it wasn't from the chest. Uh, you'll be able to see if your hearts got filled, you'll be able to see if you got a sword upgrade, if you got a, the mirror shield, power bracelets, or anything like that. Otherwise, a lot of times what we do is we'll pause the game and look at the menu and see if we can see what we got. If we got a treasure chart, or if we got a song, or if we got a pearl. Otherwise, it could be an item we don't know. But the whole point of storage is we don't know what you got until you hit a loading zone or leave the quadrant. Anyway, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to want to store that chest. So you're actually able to get a Wind Waker dive right here as well. You're going to want to get storage right here. Which is a very annoying ledge for a lot of people. There. Now I got storage again, so then the fastest way to climb up there is just, you can literally just, 
just jump slash twice. And now we'll store this chest. And then what you're going to want to do is take the chest towards north to Bird's Peak Rock. So you're climb into your boat and sail. Sail pump your way there. Uh, on the way, when you get about halfway there, you'll actually get the contents of the chest. So you might see your rupees go up just like that, which means that chest had a red rupee. Unfortunate, that means that chest had nothing valuable either. But that's the, that's the way it works in the randomizer. Anyway. The reason we do this for Bird's Pick Rock is because, one, we don't have the grapple hook to do the grapple hook clip, which you can see how to do on ZeldaSpeedRunner.com if you ever get the grapple hook early. And secondly, uh, even if you start with the bait bag, the normal way to do this island requires buying bait, buying a highway pair, and flying the bird to hit all the switches. That is incredibly slow. This is why we do the chest storage. Also, with chest storage, you can't climb ledges. So in order to get up here, since it's too high to jump slash, is you can either do a very precise jump slash from here by running off and then jump slashing midair. But if you mess up, you have to swim back around, and that's slow. So the faster setup to this, well, it's not faster, but it's guaranteed, is run into this wall and hold L and sidle off the ledge, and you will grab it, and you'll be clipped inside the wall. Climb up the ledge and press B right as Link starts to fall, and you'll end up on top of the ledge, just like this. Or I press B too late, and that's what happens if you mess up. Oof. I was trying to make sure it was like a show when they fell and I messed up. Anyway, you just do this. If I do it quicker, I won't mess up. There. That's what, that's what you're going to supposed to do. Anyway, then what you're going to want to do is turn your camera towards the grate, hold L, and just walk into the grate up from like this. And you'll clip right through it. And then you're able to enter here and get the chest for Bird's Peak Rock. After we get this chest is usually when we pause the game again to see if we can figure out what was in the second chest that we stored in case it wasn't something obvious that we were able to tell. And that had an empty bottle which could be useful for the seed. And then the last thing before you save warp out of here because you have to save warp is if you didn't get any money and, we're, and you're playing a lot of times what people would like to do is they'll like to break these pots to get a little bit of money just in case they need it for the seed. So that's an option. And then you just simply save warp out. And that is going to be the Cliff Plateau to Bird's Peak Rock Strategy. Thank you.